And now I'd like to introduce Des Levin from, thanks, I should know that, eh? Crow Sober Manel LP, who will uh, give us our audited uh, report. Uh, good evening, everyone. As you heard, my name is Desmond Levin, and I'm with the accounting firm Crow Soberman LLP, and we are the auditors of the college. Um, this is my eighth opportunity to address you on the financial statements, and the eighth opportunity to follow the Minister of Education. I'm, af <laughs> I'm afraid I cannot be as inspiring, although your financial statements do, sh do give an inspiring picture of the financial affairs of the, of the college. Okay. Um, so as you've heard, I've, I've been invited to, and I'll briefly review the financial statements for the last fiscal year, being for the year ended June 30th, 2016. Um, the financial statements included in the annual report comprise the independent auditor's report, the statement of financial position as at June 30th, 2016, and then the statement of operations for the year ended June 30th, 2016. Comparative uh, numbers for the prior year are provided on both statements. <clears throat> so firstly, the auditor's report describes the responsibilities of the college, college's management and the responsibilities of the auditors with relation to the annual financial statements presented to you and concludes with our opinion. And we were able to report that, in our opinion, the financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the college as of June 30th, 2016, and its results for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian generally accepted accounting principles. In other words, this is a clean, unqualified audit report. Um, the next statement, the statement of financial position, it's often referred to as a balance sheet, is a summary of the college's assets and liabilities at June 30th, 2016. It's at a point in time. So your total assets were approximately 9.7 million, consisting mainly of cash of about 8.6 million, and then equipment and leaseholds with a net book value of approximately a million. The cash, the bulk of which was invested in term deposits with staggered maturity dates which ensures that funds will be available to the college when needed. Your total liabilities were approximately 4.9 million, the largest component of which is, is deferred revenue. Now deferred revenue represents membership fees received by the college relating to the period after June 13, 2016. As you know, you pay your membership fees for a, a year in advance. So the portion of your membership fees that relate after June 30th, 2016 are only included in the 2017 financial statements. Uh, liabilities also included accounts payable and accrued charges of approximately 618,000. This represents expenses incurred in the period uh, end of June 30th, 2016, for which payment was only made after June 30th. Uh, the final item on the statement of changes are the net assets, which approximate $4.8 million and represents total assets of 9.7 minus total liabilities of 4.9. The amount invested in equipment and leaseholds has been shown separate, separately and the, we then arrive at the unrestricted net assets or surplus. Uh, this surplus is the amount that is available for the college to use in the future to continue to operate and achieve its goals. Future, requirement, future, project, uh, future requirements do not only include future annual operating expenses, but also the requirement to replace equipment, furniture, and leaseholds as required, and the funding of future projects to be undertaken by the college to fulfill its mandate as a regulatory college. It is also important to have a reserve to have in reserve sufficient funds to finance any potential expense, expensive disciplinary hearings that could arise in the future. Uh, the final statement is the statement of operations, which summarizes 
the revenues earned and the expenditures of the college for the year. Uh, revenue for the year was approximately 7.9 million, in an increase of approximately 500,000 K from the prior year. This increase is because of the increase in the number of active and approved members in the year. Your total operating expenses were at approximately 7.6 million, which is an increase of approximately 1.2 million from the prior year. The main reasons for the increases were salaries and benefits increased by approximately 347,000 because there were additional hires in the year and because of increases in pay rates. Um, there was an increase in rent expenses of approximately $66,000. Consulting services increased by 224,000. 19,000 was for website development. 50,000 for AFECO project for continuous professional learning for French communities in Ontario. Hearings legal increased by approximately 318,000. These are costs related to disciplinary hearings. This year the college experienced its first contested hearing and as a result had a lengthy legal process with substantial costs. The increase in the professional fees of approximately 97,000 was due mainly to the increase in the amount spent on non-statutory committee and regulation policy and new legislation work. Because of the increase in postal rates in the number of, and the number of members, courier and postage increased by about $44,000. And finally, the Leadership Pilot Symposium held in September 2015 cost approximately $130,000, resulting in an increase in project expenses. The remaining expenditures were generally in line with those of the previous years. Okay. So in conclusion, we'd like to thank Beth, James, and Mark, and the finance personnel for providing us with excellent working papers and for the, their cooperation during the audit. Uh, if you have any questions, if there are any items that I haven't addressed uh, in the financial statements, we'll attempt to answer them during the question period that's to follow. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Des.